All right, everybody. Welcome to episode 190 of Psycho's Platters. Ollie's powered by coffee every time, all the time. So, what is Mighty Psycho doing in this particular episode? Um, that's right, it's another album review. This time it's the new Beach Boys double CD archival set, the 1967 Sunshine Tomorrow set is what we've got going here. Uh, it's double disc, of course, comprising of various material that was recorded during the Smiley Smile and Wild Honey album sessions mixed with some live material. <clears throat> I got a lot of research here uh, that I've done for this. Uh, the research compiled and gleaned courtesy of Wikipedia, Classic Rock, UltimateClassicRock.com, excuse me, and RollingStone.com as well. Let's just get started on this. First of all, Wild Honey, which was the 13th studio album for the Beach Boys, was released December 18th, 1967, but it was recorded between September and mid-November 1967. See, record companies, you know, I mean, we're talking, what, less than 30 days, boom, album's out. Wish things were like that today, right? I don't know. All right, so combination of Wally Hyder's studio and Brian Wilson's home studio in L.A. Um, you've got here, uh, two singles came off of it. Wild Honey, which made it to 31 on the U.S. chart back then, 29 in the U.K., and Darlin, which was a top 20 hit, number 19 in the U.S., number 11 in the U.K., just missed the top 10. The album in general... Number 24 in the U.S. and number 7 in the U.K. The, the, the U.K. audience loved this album, and I don't blame them one bit. Now, Darlin was originally, was originally known by a different lyrics and structure as Thinking About You Baby, which was also written by Brian and Mike, uh, but it was uh, given to Sharon Marie in June of 1964, which she cut a 45 on Capitol. American Spring, a.k.a. The Honeys, uh, also did this song in 1972 as Thinking About Your Baby. <clears throat> Here Comes the Night off of this album, later redone as a disco single in 1979. One edit of it ends up on the L.A. album, which stood for Light Album. Uh, now get this, <laughs> a little more research. Some people actually call it a Northern Soul dance track. I'm not making this up. Um, I guess I could get it on all this, in a way. Uh, the disco single, there, like I said, there's four different edits, I'm told. The one I listened to was about ten minutes long. I get it. I mean, it's got that, it's got the disco rhythms, but it kind of, you know, it gets you on your feet on that one, for sure. Now, Darlin' and Time to Get Alone. Those tunes, Brian originally wanted to give these songs to a new group at the time called Redwood, which would end up changing their name to Three Dog Night. That's right. Now, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Carl Carl Wilson and Mike Love nixed that idea and pretty much insisted Brian concentrate on Beach Boys material and, and affairs only. So that was the end of that. But Time to Get Alone ended up on the Three Dog Night 1993 double CD set Celebrate the Three Dog Night Story. Uh, Darlin's not on there, but Time to Get Alone is, so uh, go look that up on YouTube, because I haven't had a chance to listen to that one yet, and I'm a big Three Dog Night fan, but I didn't know they did that. Uh, the song Mama Says uh, was originated from an unreleased version of Vegetables from Smiley Smile. Uh, became the lowest selling LP at that time, and it was only on charts for 15 weeks. Now, personal opinion? I think Wild Honey is a fun, melodic, overlooked album, honestly. I wrote this down for my own self so I could remember, but truthfully, it's a fun album. I do not understand why this thing did not do better. Released at the time, along with this album, was competing against was the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour and the Stone's Satanic Majesty's Request. Now, all three of those albums, in my opinion, were overlooked and had gems abound. So, I, like I said, Wild Honey... Awesome. Uh, Warner Brothers, in a way, must have thought so, too, because they reissued it in 1974. But this time, on this double CD, for the first time, you get the complete stereo mix of Wild. And uh, the only difference, of course, is at the end, Mama says, was only a mono mix originally. The rest of it, though, is in full, real stereo. Now, what do I mean by that? 
Capital was known, oh boy, Capital was known for doing the whole duophonic thing. I'm not even going to get into that. That'd be half an episode in itself. The duophonic was a mess. That's where, when it comes to Beach Boys albums from the, from the early to about this time period, all right, stick to the monos. I, I, I know, but you'll thank me for that. But for this, though, you get the real stereo mix on this. All right, so the Wild Honey Sessions, which you've got here on disc one, uh, you've got this one's like I said, from September to November of 67. Cool, Cool Water, you get an alternate early version. It ended up released, uh, a later version of the song, released as a single, March of 71, and would be on 1970 Sunflower album, originally part of a song called I Love to Say Dada. Right? Time to Get Alone, I probably, I've already explained that already, but it would end up on the 1969 album 2020. Can't Wait Too Long, alternate early version. Kind of has a history that's too long for here. Uh, it started out, worked in 1967, sat in the vaults. Brian brings it back out in 1980 because he was looking at old 60s tapes. He puts overdubs on it. Back in the vault it goes, but Brian must have had this song in the back of his head because he ends up putting a solo version out in 2008 on his solo album, Lucky Old Son. So, that's what the first 11 tracks are, is uh, is the complete album. And then you get to tracks 12 through 25 for the sessions. You see some interesting progression, honestly, of these tunes and some cool rocking bits. And in one or two tracks, a little silliness, which is good for them. Uh, the collection of alternate versions and session highlights abound. Tracks 26 through 30, Wild Honey Live, conclude disc one. November 17th and uh, in Detroit, and November 22nd in Pittsburgh in 67, round this disc out, cool live tunes, honestly. Which leads us to disc two. Disc two goes off and starts out. Tracks 1 through 10 are the Smiley Smile sessions. The backing tracks, long versions, alternate mixes, basically recorded June to July of 67, previously unreleased. This album first to be produced by Beach Boys, not just Brian Wilson. Heroes and Villains, originally a Smiley Smile mix, different than the single though. Brian objected to the song being on the album, but was outvo outvoted by the rest of the band. Uh, that particular track made it to number 12 on the Billboard charts. Vegetables, fun little song, with an appearance by Paul McCartney. Yeah, Paul McCartney, chewing on celery. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Where else, oh boy, where else in the summer of love can you get a beetle to chew on celery and you still end up having it on a record? I can't think of anything else. Uh, Fall Breaks and Back to Winter is a, recur is a recurring metal melody part, excuse me, I can barely read my writing, from the Elements Fire from Smile. It, he ended up doing an elemental suite, Brian did, and uh, part of the other thing I think from Fire was Mrs. O'Leary's Cow, and, and it was just kind of something else. So, when the album was released, it's September 18, 1967, it only went to number 41, number 9 in the UK. See, that this UK people really loved the Beach Boys back then. There was a new, newly created stereo mix was reissued in 2012 for Smiley. Now, tracks 11 through 24 on, on disc 2 is the live album, the legendary live album, Laid in Hawaii. That's L-E-I, comma, D. Get it? Because it's oh, Hawaii. All right, anyways. Basically, August 25th and 26th of 1967. Uh, Beach Boys hits, Help Me Rhonda, California Girls, Good Vibrations, and others, along with some very interesting cover songs, uh, like The Letter from the Box Tops, With a Little Help from My Friends, Beatles, uh, and, uh, and Game of Love from Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders. They're not bad, it's just you don't see it coming. You really don't. Um... I don't really get why they did it. I guess I'm assuming they wanted to try to stay current. I, you know, I, I that's my guess. So, uh, but uh, shortly after Shelving Smile canceled doing Monterey Pop because they were supposed to do that, 
and backed out at the last minute. And finishing Smiley Smile, the band schedules two shows in Hawaii that would have that would have made a live album to be released on Brother Records, which was the band's label imprint distributed by Capitol. Uh, Bruce Johnston, a member of the Beach Boys at that time since uh, Pet Sounds, he refused to go to the, to do the gigs due to quote from him it got all too weird so Brian Wilson stepped in sort of reluctantly at the last minute but only if he could play organ putting Car putting Carl and Al Jardine to play bass supposedly the band played poorly and uh, mixed with technical problems that shelved the project now honestly listening to this stuff it's not as bad as it sounds it really doesn't. Um, it, it really doesn't. It, it could it have been better? Oh yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't. It doesn't suck. All right, I'll tell you that right now. Um, so knowing that though, they go back into the studio September 11th at Wally Hyder's studio again. The band tried to re-record the whole performance to make it like a live in studio thing. See, and uh, after six songs were recorded. They, they gave up. The idea was abandoned. That was the end of that bit. Uh, tracks 25 through, oh, through 29. Actually, before I say that, I should mention this really quick. Um, parts, oh boy, part of this Laden Hawaii previously released, parts of it, going back to the 1983 Rarities album. Uh, so, I mean, but at least you get all of it here instead of the parts that were uh, I guess it wasn't, you know, complete parts, you know what I'm saying? So it's all on here. All right, so, uh, and then, tracks 25 through 29 were, uh, were August 1967 live tracks, including Heroes and Villains and Surfing. Tracks 30 through 32, Washington, D.C. on November 19th, and Boston, November 23rd, 1967. Finally, finishing up on the double disc here, Tracks 33 and 34, 1967 Studio of Surf's Up and Surfer Girl. Not, not entirely sure why they did it that way. So, I know you're asking, hey, shut up, Psycho, and tell us, is this worth the buy? Yeah, it's worth the buy. I'm going to tell you something. In my, in my humble opinion, I am H.O., in my humble opinion, the Beach Boys, the 60s was their golden decade, okay? I like some of the 70s stuff. I even like a little bit of the 80s stuff. But the 60s was what made it for them, okay? This here is not a great lost album, okay? It's not. But it is a very good, fun, feel-good album. There was some fun things on here that I listened to. I'm like, whoa, what the heck? The harmonies. The harmonies. This is what the Beach Boys are known for. Brian Wilson's genius mixed with the harmonies of everybody. That's where your complete package comes in, okay? This here is a very good archival example of that proof. Now, I'm suggesting, yes, I'm giving it at least a thumbs up, almost two. Almost two thumbs up on that. I should have a better grading scale, right? So I'm going to sound like a commercial. You want to get this thing? Cheapest places. Deepdiscount.com, around 17 bucks. And uh, Barnes & Noble, too. Seven, around between 17 and 18 for Barnes & Noble. So go get this. It will. If you're a Beach Boys fan, you will not go wrong on this thing. If you're a really good fan of 60s music, yeah. Yeah, I think you will really enjoy this, honestly. Um, I, I learned a couple things off of this. The Beach Boys, a lot of people go off and say, hey, guess what? You know, Pet Sounds was it for them. I love Pet Sounds. I do. But uh, they're obviously, they're worth more than that. All right. Like I said, any of the 60s work would be excellent. Now, I did get a good valid question. Going back to the duophonic thing, okay? Uh, Doug Fields, real good friend of mine, he went off and he asked us, I brought up to him that, like I said, with the stereo mix for this, and, uh, and that the stereo for Pet Sounds came out last year, 
with the you know the mono and stereo, the double CD, and uh, he wanted to know out of curiosity, are they ever going to do any? St is there stereo mixes? You know the stereo tapes exist for the pre '66 material for the albums as a whole. I'm not that. I'm not that knowledgeable as a Beach Boy fan at that. I tried to look up here, and I, I didn't get very much answers. So what I'd like you to do in the comments, please, is tell me, if you're a Beach Boys expert, tell me, is their whole album stereo mixtapes? You know, are there? Not the duophonic crap. Real stereo. Um, the other thing is, if you're not a Beach Boys expert, but you love them anyway... Tell me what your favorite album or your favorite Beach Boy song is, uh, even if there's like a memory attached to it, okay? Go do that for me, please, and go do me another favor. I would, it would greatly behoove you, and I would thank you immensely. Go like and sub Psycho's Bladders here, because there is going to be more album reviews and classic vinyl finds. My next episode will be another classic vinyl find, but I will give you a hint of future album reviews coming later in the month before I go on hiatus. Probably the new Alice Cooper and a new Elvis Presley 3CD package. That's your hint. Okay? Take care. God bless. Rock on. See you next time. And drop a comment here. Surf's up, kids.